next is where you lay down a measuring tape, as Claire has right here. And we're gonna lay it down and we're gonna figure out, so between the, all of us, we have to make it reproducible. We have to figure out how long we're gonna make the transect to get the best sample size. We have to figure out like, how far out are we going to look? Um, what we're doing is, is we're gonna be looking for um, a deer scat and we're going to guess the population based on the deer scat. And our deer scat is gonna be proved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if I had like kiddos, like what would they need to know ahead of time to be able to even have a guess mm -hmm. to like what distance that should be? So um, it really kind of depends on where you're working. Like working on a bigger open area, it really depends. I mean, you could even do like 10 feet a few 10 feet feet's in different locations so you can get different areas. I mean, we chose an area originally over here because there's a bunch of different deer scat. We saw some like really, yeah, really different ones. Choose somewhere maybe under a tree or where there's shrubbery that an animal could actually be scatting so that they can also have a better... Well, that goes into bias too. Yeah. So we have to figure out, because bias is like the number one thing, so how do we get an accurate population if we're going to pick something underneath the tree because that's where they're going to hang out the most, mm -hmm. you know? So that's something that you can bring up to your students. But as Claire said, she brought up a really good point that it depends on the size. So what's going to be a decent sample size for the area that you are studying? Are we, are we get, just going to focus on this one little area over here and just say, okay, we're going to do the southwest side and then that's going to be our study area or are we going to try and take the entire population to the entire refuge which is a lot of acres i mean our transects will have to be really large and is that feasible that's another question that you can ask well if we do do 200 meter transect is that feasible do are we going to have enough time are we going to have enough resources like these are all things that you can bring up and I mean there's no right or wrong question honestly it's just what you think is going to be the right answer. Which I think is definitely the hardest. Of yeah. Parts of like within these methodologies is you really need to ask the biases like if you're mapping stuff you need to ask the bias of if you're going to map a population of people are you focusing more on one group of people in a certain rich area versus a lower income area how is that going to affect the data is it actually going to represent the population as a whole within what you're looking at. So when you're doing it, you're definitely asking yourself these questions. And that's why I like, we're just gonna throw you into it a little. <laughs> so like when you're doing it, um, then we'll have like a little discussion of like answering some of these and what you think was reasonable based off of you're going to choose a length and then how do you measure do you, do the you poop? Think, yeah, and then we'll, we'll have side? a discussion about it. Is this okay? Is this, how, how do you think that you guys did? We're kind of like, we're directing you, but you guys are going to be doing the activities. If I was just a kid and they're looking at it, it's like, if you're making transects, where are you looking at the poop? Is it right next to the transects? Are you right looking at the like poop if you're like here in the transects right here and you see one over there? Are you counting that? Is that like being biased towards it? Is it out of your data zone? You just stay within the data zone. So to some extent, the data kind of tells you what your size is because it, you don't want to have it's one and then two and then one and then three right. you want to have big enough numbers so 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 you may have you know different sizes to get enough so it's not just one and two and one exactly, so. exactly. And of course, one group is going to do transact and then the other group is going to do transact and then we'll come together and we'll discuss about how each of the groups did <laughs>
I, uh, so I guess the next thing I would say is, so you're taking your data, what is it, every three feet or every five feet? Exactly. You see how many there are every five feet, mark it down, the next five feet, the next five feet. Right. Maybe so, five feet might be the right amount. I don't know. So, so maybe we do, we just stroll it down, look at it, observe it, then we decide, oh, this is how we're going to do it. Then we go back and start methodically right. doing it. Let's do it. Okay. Be a little easier to pick out in the tall grass. Okay, so okay, sorry. We won't but if we want to do, <laughs> that's fine. Good eye, yeah. Those aren't. Are they, those are real poops. <laughs> <laughs> those don't taste like poop. Okay, so how do you? Like one, two, three, four, five. So, five so I, put, I put like eight, and then like one. Pile. So then we need like eight pieces in one, one pile. Okay. That's why the one is actually like a lot bigger than the other okay. individual ones. Like we're we're doing all the data on this side, and they're doing all the data on that side, and then so we'll get together and. So I think would you put it all together, or would you keep it separate so that way you have more data points? Well, it's starting separately, so it's fine. We can combine it. I think this is ours, maybe. Yeah. So that's right there. Oh, it's <laughs> it's right at the 15 feet. Oh, okay. But are we also thinking that like when a deer does like go to the bathroom, like it's usually not just like one little piece, it usually is like a pile. And so then like any runoff, like any little pieces come from that pile and I'm just like spread out. This uh, white-tailed deer <laughs> versus <laughs> mule deer, I don't know if it, how much they look different. <laughs> I don't know why either. I think that's genetic testing you gotta do with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, I think they just like bears. A black bears scat here is gonna look way different than a bear black bear up in Alaska. Yeah. Right, that's right. Their vegetation is a lot different. They're yeah. even probably a little bit more meat than they are here. But I mean, if we're talking about two different species of deer within the arsenal that have all the same types of. Oh, I was just thinking size. Like, you yeah. might be able to tell just by the size. Right. Is it each individual poop or is it just like. Because some of it was like, there'd be like one or two and then there'd be like a big clump. So we decided that at that point that we would just put it all together as one. Even though it may mean that multiple deer were there that did it, but it, we just counted it as one. Um, probably the biggest question was really how far out were we going to go as far as collecting data. You know, that was that was really the biggest one. Because I mean, you could honestly go, you know, fingertip to fingertip and then you're scanning, but then, you know, are you really going to collect everything that you see? Especially with actual deer scat, I mean, it's small, <laughs> and it blends in really well, mm -hmm. so the prunes were actually helpful because they did stand out a little bit more. Okay. Make sure that your data is quality behind it. And it's not just like, oh, you guys did great, you collected data. Well, you don't know what you collected because everyone had a different idea of what was going on. So I think just getting everybody on the same page was like, okay, we did, like, we did 50 feet as well, and we did about two feet off the each side. I like your uh, rationale behind that. It's about your, you know, it's like your field of view, your kind of your swath path. So if you have like a big group of students, you know, you could cover quite a bit of ground. You're like, you know, everybody arm with apart and just kind of go out. And it's hard to see small stuff, but I think when you're working with a manageable distance, like 50 feet, I think just not biting off too much is like the biggest problem you know, right. so that the kids aren't like I don't know how are we ever gonna do this like that's a manageable distance you have like it's your pathway so I think that was a big one it's just making sure that it's the kids are all on the same page and they it's manageable to them. like the question Lexi asked us well how many would you do and and then that always comes back to what's your question yeah exactly. so, we were talking so. about like extrapolating like Okay, do we need a cluster as one, or should we count 12, and then would we have to know, like, 12 equals one deer, like, if you're trying to figure out the population? Right. So that's what we were kind of like. So that's where our background research also yeah. comes into play. But, like, they started counting every single individual scat, like, piece of pellets, and I was like, <laughs> are you looking at how much like biomass they're eating, or are you just looking at population? And 
He are, said if if one deer makes seven piles, then that's how many piles you'll be looking for. So it all depends on your research question. You want to get in there. I mean, you have one summer to get all your research done. For kids, you only have a couple of weeks to do research with the kids before their science fair is up. So how much time do you want to spend um, collecting other data when you can when you should be collecting the um, the, the data that's reasonable for your um, question? How approximate really exactly? Right. In this work, we're thinking about, you know, not just like a pipeline for scientists, right, but like engagement in research, teamwork for all students, development of 21st century skills, and so all that coming to consensus, mm -hmm. right? Oh, that's huge. Teamwork. I don't care what you're going to do, right? The teamwork piece. Like, so those are really beneficial things. And then also, why do they care about this? Like, what have you done to generate interest? and relevance for the students that they're like, oh, I want to count poop, yeah. right? Because there's not a fixed order to like, maybe you're doing like pure exploration first and then you set things up or, you, you know, there's not one right order. You can do things in different order and kind of mix it up right. yeah. and see what works for your kids. And that's what's so much better than homework yes. compared to doing hey. this because when you're outside, Yes. You, you, I don't think that we're really taught to collaborate yeah. in doing our homework. It's like you're cheating if you ever right. get collaboration to finish your stuff. And it's like out here, you guys need to yeah, find right. the best right. forms of communication, the best forms of how to do things. And you're not the smartest person in anything. No one really is. But you, there's other people around who right. can help you and give you that new guidance. So definitely teaching them in this process, it's not cheating to collaborate. I yeah. find that is like one of the hard things with students is they're like, I'm scared to ask. And sometimes you get too focused on yourself. It's like, it's okay to ask. So.